All right, let's get it started. Uh, actually, before getting it started, let's have a couple of housekeeping items, if you don't mind. We have a survey to pick a new time. I'm not going to bias you, but I mean, there's a potential that we may change the time to maybe a few hours later. Um, if you could, by the end of this call, just uh, enter what time works best for you. That would be amazing. And then the second housekeeping item, which is also related to our today's uh, we pause is the eighth episode of the ally show is out uh, and if you didn't know Amanda Grover is there and she's mm -hmm. talking a lot about like so many great stuff that I know a lot of you might be interested so if you haven't tuned into it already please do it's it's one of my favorite episodes and the fact that we have her right after that call here it's just a bonus so with, uh, with that said Amanda uh we are so happy to have you today as our uh, guest instructor. Uh, Amanda and I, we actually met in a very interesting uh, setting mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Uh, so weird. None of us live there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I met Amanda and her husband in uh, Vancouver in a techno party. And we were like, we started talking and we actually noticed, oh my God, we have a lot in common. Hey, Adriel, good to see you. But, uh, oh my God, we have to talk more. And there we go. Now we are... Um, many projects into our uh, collaboration. So I'm so excited. Without further ado, I'm going to pass the microphone to Amanda Grover for her awesome self-compassion workshop. Thanks so much, Ali. I'm going to share my screen. So just let me know if you can all see it. Oh, I think it's here. Yeah. Okay. So welcome all to the self-compassion workshop. I'm so excited to host this and throughout my healing journey, self-compassion has really been something that has allowed me to find the strength to really pursue the things that are really important to me and that I'm really passionate about. So my hope is that when you leave this workshop, you will feel more confident in your abilities to go after the things that may scare you a little bit. Um, and really hold yourself compassionately when you do experience that kind of fear. And so similarly to Ali, I was dealing with overwhelming stress at my job and my mental health was really suffering. So I decided to quit and pursue my own ventures. I started working freelance for various different agencies to help keep myself afloat. But really, I the personal development space and really focused on my own healing. And through that process, I really have unlearned so many patterns. And in yoga, they refer to that as uh, samskaras. So just a little fun fact there that I learned through my training. And I'm able to live my life from a much more empowered place. And that really involves me following my heart and listening to my body on a regular basis. And although there have been many highs and lows, the journey has been completely worthwhile. And like I said, the biggest driving force in my healing journey has been learning to truly love myself, be more compassionate with myself, and really trust myself and my intuition and the things that I want to go after. And this really included adopting a beginner's mindset rather than expecting myself to be perfect at everything the first time that I try it. And if I don't perform the way that I wanted to or expected to, really learning to like not label myself as a failure. Um, and this has really led to my ability to try so many new things that I never thought I would. Even just the yoga teacher training I'm doing um, in Costa Rica, I had my roommate say to me, oh, I could really see you become a yoga, a yoga teacher. And my jaw just hit the floor because I was like, no, there's no way. I could never be a yoga teacher. <laughs> and here I am today doing it um, and really adopting that beginner's mindset and letting myself learn as I go. And in addition to adopting a beginner's mindset, I really started journal journaling a lot. And I found it extremely helpful to just dump all of my thoughts onto paper and just have regular conversations and check-ins with myself, whether that was like out loud <laughs> or on paper. <laughs> And um, it really allowed me to reflect on my prog progress, notice patterns, and consistently tell myself how proud I am of myself. And so even if I wasn't performing the way that I wanted to perform, or even if things in my life weren't going necessarily wanted them to, 
I would consistently tell myself I was proud of myself for just showing up for myself. And so all of you should be proud of yourself too for just showing up today for even 30 minutes for yourself. Um, and the thing about us humans <laughs> is that we tend to be like Teflon for positive thoughts and Velcro for negative thoughts. And so we really have to be intentional about the way we speak to ourselves and the storylines that we allow to determine our beliefs and our actions. And since we are like Velcro for negative thoughts, each time that we have a negative thought, we really need to replace it with five times the amount of positive thoughts to really help reinforce these new thoughts and beliefs that we want to um, em like embody and live our life by. And so once I learned this, I became really hyper vigilant about like any time that I was mean to myself. <laughs> and an example of this is like, you know, if you go to a party and you're having a conversation and then you end up leaving the party and you start to like cringe <laughs> and you're like, why did I say that thing to that person? And you have like these negative thoughts come into your mind and this really uncomfortable sensation in your body. Well, when I would have that kind of experience, I noticed I would automatically say to myself, I'm so crazy. <laughs> and so I started to really pay attention to how many times I would say that. And it was a lot. <laughs> so I just had this belief all the time that I was crazy, which isn't really true. And so I made an active effort to replace those thoughts anytime that they came up on autopilot. And so I would stop myself in my tracks anytime I thought I'm crazy and I would say in my mind five times that I love myself. And it might sound silly, but over time, it's really impactful and can have a huge change. And also, I would probably just pause and like think about how many times you actually tell yourself that you love yourself. Probably like not that often. You probably have a lot more negative thoughts about yourself than having those check-ins where you like really are there for yourself and support yourself in the ways that you really deserve. Um, and so if we are able to replace these automatic negative thoughts with positive thoughts, we can work to reshape our inner narrative and our concept of our self-image. And of course, this is not something that is just going to happen overnight. <laughs> it's something that, you know, you really need to repeat over and over again for it to actually, you know, feel safe in your mind and feel safe in your body. But the more and more you treat yourself with kindness, the way that you would treat a friend, um, it will really uh, compound over time and have a really positive impact. Um, and then something else I just want to share, when it comes to self-compassion, it's not really about um, not taking accountability for your actions. It just means not shaming yourself if you make a mistake. So obviously, we always want to be kind to others and, you know, be the best person that we can be, but also just having compassion when, you know, we make a mistake or, you know, we just aren't perfect at something right away. <laughs> and so I wanted to also share the three pillars of self-compassion. So the first is mindfulness, then shared humanity and kindness. And so when it comes to mindfulness, you really want to start to first be aware of the sensation in your body when you're feeling a lot of stress, or when you're feeling really bad about yourself, you don't have to do a whole meditation, but you can just take a few minutes to close down your eyes and really tune into what's happening inside of your body. So do you feel like a tightness in your chest? Do you feel this like pit in your stomach? Does your back feel tight? Are your, is your head like rushed with like a blushed feeling of like that heat that comes up and just become aware of that sensation so that in the future, when the sensation comes up, you can recognize that it's a sensation in the body before your mind makes up a story about it. Um, the next part of mindfulness is also just becoming aware of the negative storylines that you repeatedly have in your mind that end up ruling your life. Um, because then, like I've spoken about, you can work to rewire those thoughts and those beliefs about yourself so that you can feel more confident and go after the things that you really want to go after. And then the second one is recognizing our shared humanity. So recognizing that no one is perfect and that perfection really doesn't exist. <laughs> um, and knowing that 
but to become great at something, you first have to be a beginner and not rushing over that or shaming yourself if you're not perfect at something, especially if you're really passionate about it. I feel like a lot of people don't pursue the things they're really passionate about because of that fear. So just, you know, recognizing that's a normal part of the process. And then also realizing that, you know, everybody experiences moments of self-doubt and tough emotions and and knowing that you're not alone in it and it's a normal part of life. Every emotion that you feel is passing. It's never permanent. So realizing that, you know, maybe there are people that you can reach out to and talk to or just recognizing that you're not alone um, when you experience this. And then the last one is kindness. So learning to be kind to ourselves, and then also learning to be kind to others because most judgments that we have of others really do come from judgments that we have about ourselves. And so when we're able to be kinder to ourselves, we naturally become kinder to others because we can empathize with their situation and recognize that each of us are really complex beings that have had to endure several different hardships just to get to where we are today. And so when we're able to recognize that life is a combination (laughs) of peaks and valleys, we can use the low moments in our lives as an opportunity to investigate our thoughts, recognize they're likely not really that true, and also choose to show ourselves unconditional love. And so for the second half of this session, I want us to kind of take some time to practice and become more aware of the situations where we're being really hard on ourselves for no reason. And so if you have a paper or a pen nearby, feel free to use that. Or if you just want to use your computer or your phone to type in some notes, any option works. (laughs) But the exercise goes like this. So on the first page, you want to write down all of the things you think about yourself when you're feeling really low, you're feeling really stressed. And like, it just feels like everything is like crumbling around you. And just think about identify those negative thoughts that are just really unproductive and kind of harming you. And then on the next page, I want you to think about the times you're feeling most proud of yourself You feel like you can accomplish anything (laughs) and you're just like feeling super empowered and just jot down all of the qualities and characteristics that come to mind in those experiences. And also, I know sometimes this can be hard for people. (laughs) So just think about also any time that, you know, you've been complimented and then you didn't even like want to believe it. You didn't even think that it was true because there's so many amazing things that we sometimes overlook. And I also wanted to touch on like conceitedness, because in my mind, when we focus on loving ourselves and being more compassionate with ourselves, it's not really being conceited. It's more so um, it helps you to become more humble because you lose that perfection mindset and then you're more willing to ask for help when you need it. And you're more willing to say like, hey, I don't know that. Can you like explain it to me more? And so I think that, you know, that's an important distinction to make as well. And The point of this exercise is really to help you understand and recognize the negative storylines that may be impacting your mental health and perception of yourself. And then the next time these thoughts come up, you can remind yourself that all emotions are passing and they won't you won't feel this way forever. And then you also have this list of all of the great qualities about yourself that you can use to remind yourself. And then when those negative thoughts creep in, as they typically do, you can think one you can pick one of those uh, positive thoughts and say it five times in your head, or you can just say you love yourself five times. (laughs) So if you want to take some time, I'm going to try and share some audio so that there's some music (laughs) while you journal, but I'll stop talking now. (laughs) Awesome. So just so that I understood it correctly, first page is all the negative thoughts I have about myself when that time comes up. And then second page is all the good thoughts I have. So two page, two separate page journaling for myself. Yes. Okay, perfect.
it seems like there's a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> so now that we've done the journaling part, um, if there's anything that anyone wants to share from the experience, we can have a little bit of time for a discussion. Or if you have any questions, happy to answer those. Um, but just feel free if you want to unmute and ask, or if you feel more comfortable in the chat, you can do that too. I, I, I can jump in. I just, I, I definitely can identify with having those low moments and maybe not feeling quite um, good enough or smart enough. Or, you know, sometimes maybe I'm just not working hard enough. Hi, do we have, so, do we have sorry. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Lola. Oh, Lola. <laughs> She's been yelling at you. Oh. Okay, but. <laughs> and But truly, I definitely identify, you know, but then also moments that you write, I don't think we hang on to enough, are the moments that we do feel good, like when we had like a win moment, and you kind of feel like, yeah, I could do this. You know, you mm -hmm. have a little bit of confidence, but it's fleeting. I yeah. definitely agree that it's fleeting. So definitely and that part better. Yeah. And I feel like it's such a powerful thing to remember that little saying about how we're Teflon for positive thoughts and then Velcro for the negative ones. That was great. It was perfect. Yeah. Definitely. Because a lot of times we just latch on to the negative moments rather than kind of relishing in the positive ones and reinforcing it so that we can create more of that in our life and it's really easy to get sucked into the low moments and forget all of the positive things that we do have and all of the positive things about us. It's really true. De definitely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I also, like you said, most of the time think about the negative. Like I find myself, I use the word stupid so many times. Mm -hmm. The word crazy, I use a lot. Um feeling like I'm an imposter, like some things I feel like people will compliment me and they say I do well and I pretend, oh, thanks. But meanwhile, inside, I feel like, no, I'm really not good at that. I, you know, it's, it's, and then, you know, but I do think that I try to be kind. I do think that I find, um, I'm good at finding the good in people, but yeah, same thing. Those positive things are far and few between the negatives come up probably on a daily basis. Yeah, definitely. And I think, it's really important. You said that you a lot of times find the good in people. So also flipping it onto yourself and finding the good in you <laughs> and all of the great things that all of the great qualities you have and thinking about if I'm thinking all of these good things about all of these other people, then why do I think that all of these people are just thinking negative things about me? Because that's also something that's so common for all of us. It's just assume people are thinking the worst of us rather than assume they're thinking kind things about us. So it's definitely relatable. Yeah. Anyone else want to share or have any questions? Oh, yeah, Samira. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for the great opportunity you provided us. Um, uh, um, I loved how the music tone changed. Uh, it was very uh, helpful in the brainstorming process. And yeah, there's just this um, power when you start putting things down on a piece of paper. So I really appreciate um, this um, activity. Oh, thank you. I'm really glad that you felt it was impactful. And I actually did this exercise myself one day when I was just feeling really badly about myself. I kind of was like, why do I think all these things about myself? <laughs> and so then I just said, you know what? I'm going to write down all the things I think of myself when I'm in these really low moments. And then I'm going to think about all of the positive things, I think. Because then it like looking at the contrast between the two also shows, you know, like when you are having those down moments, it's not the truth all the time. It just, you know, might, maybe in that moment you're having a hard day and maybe you have other things in your life that are causing you to be stressed or emotional and then they're kind of clouding your thinking and making you think that these negative statements are just like always true and it's just not the case. So I think having that kind of contrast can help us remember, you know, it's not all bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing that I would like to share, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your story. The first thing is that uh, when I was uh, trying to write the negative things, I was just doing it so quickly and I could fill out like many pages. But in the positive side, uh, after 
writing two lines, I was like, okay, is there anything else that I can add to this? And um, I was trying to think and I, whenever something came into my mind, I was like, oh, it's not something important because like many people have this like positive thing. Many people can do that. So it's not something unique that you should write it out. And this contrast was kind of um, interesting to think about because when it comes to negative things, I'm like, okay, I should write all these things. And I didn't care that, yeah, many people do that. Okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. That's uh, like nature of the human. But in a positive part, first of all, I couldn't like write many things. And second, I was thinking to write something unique that not all people do that. So it's something I, that I guess I need to pay more attention in the future about myself. Yeah, definitely. And I think that goes back to the shared humanity part too. You know, all of these qualities are human and there are, I'm sure there are many things that are unique and amazing about you. And I definitely agree. Sometimes it's hard to think about the positive qualities just because we are constantly consumed with the negative ones and that's why I mentioned also kind of thinking about compliments that you receive and then you kind of just brush off because that, that's something that I've experienced people telling me a compliment over and over and then me never believing it and then one day I just like thought about it and I was like why do I never believe that like why would these people be lying to me about this and so also kind of maybe taking note of like, what are the things that people tell me all the time about myself that I'm good at and that they appreciate about me that I just like don't even give any mind to. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. also like on, on my end, I think it was um, also very interesting how quickly I could feel page one. <laughs> and I definitely had a hard time feeling page two. Um, glad to hear that I'm not alone. Uh, and, uh, this is common as well. Like, I, I think just like doing this exercise itself and like having this conversation was really interesting to see what kind of thoughts we are all going through and how we need to be mindful, as you said, Amanda, be mindful about how they're showing up in our head. So I think that, that was interesting, uh, in my experience also, just want to thank you for this great exercise that you brought to this show. Um, I know that um, we are almost right at time, uh, but um, just like last week, if anyone wants to stay after this call, um, Amanda told me earlier that she she's willing to stay. It's going to be off the record. I'm going to pause the recording, and then I will also be out of this conversation because uh, I have to do something. Uh, but if you all want to stay... Uh, Amanda is going to be staying and you can maybe continue this amazing conversation. Um, and thanks again, Amanda. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you everyone for being here. And if you have to run too, that's totally fine. But if anyone has any questions or anything else they want to share, I'll be hanging around for a few more minutes. <laughs> All right. Then I wish everyone a very happy weekend. Those who are celebrating Persian New Year, happy Nowruz. And I will see you guys in the next one.